Hi you two, welcome to our first writing challenge. You're going to need a pen or a pencil and you're going to need some paper. If you've still got your home learning book that we sent with you, go and grab that and I'll see you shortly. Welcome back. Okay, let's have a look at our objective. So this week we are going to write a set of instructions. But before we get going with any of the writing, we need to think of some important reasons to why we're doing this in the first place. So I want you to have a think about these two questions. Why do we need instructions? And what do we have to include when we're writing a set of instructions? So again, pause the video, have a think, write down your answers, talk to somebody at home, and we'll come back together in a minute. Let's have a look at those answers then. How did you get on? So the first question was, why do we need instructions? Well, instructions are written for someone who needs to know how to do something. We can't assume that everybody knows how to do everything. I know I certainly don't. And let's have a look at some of the examples of where we might need to use instructions. So we might need some instructions for some recipes. We might need some instructions on how to play a particular game. We might need some instructions on how to make a particular recipe. It might be making Mr. Preston's amazing shortbread. Or maybe we need to inform somebody on how to keep safe. So instructions are there to help us learn, to provide us with knowledge, to make us have fun and to also keep us safe. Let's have a look at our second question. What features do we include when writing a set of instructions? Now here, I've used a woggle, what a good one looks like. I'm going to ask you to have another look. You may have already come up with some suggestions, but pause the video and see if you can spot some of the key features that make this a really good set of instructions. Let's have a look and see if we've spotted all the features that make our instructions. The first one we have is a heading. This goes right at the top and is nice and clear to tell the reader what the instructions are about. Our second feature is a subheading. I'm hoping you can see that on the screen here too. It says you will need. And this is really important to make sure that you have everything that you need, which is kind of why the third feature can be our equipment. That might be a list of equipment. It might even include a photograph as well. Let's have a look at the set of instructions. Again, we have another subheading and along with that, we have some numbers or some bullet points. Numbers or bullet points allow the reader to follow the instructions step by step. You will also notice that the instructions begin on a new line for every new instruction. Our next feature, and I'm going to cover Mr. Alien, sorry Mr. Alien, are imperative verbs. Sometimes we know them as bossy verbs. Let's have a think about what a verb is. Can you remember the action? That's right, let's do it together, year two. A verb is a doing word. Can you do that for me? Pause the video, have a look and see if you can identify the imperative verbs in each sentence. Right, let's make this an hour turn and let's have a look. So in that very first sentence, we can see the imperative stick. Can you say that for me? Stick. In the second sentence, we have the bossy verb of draw. Draw. Some others that I spotted, I spotted add. That's a very bossy verb. And the final imperative that I spotted was the word colour. Did you spot any other imperative verbs here too? What do you notice about where the imperative verb comes in the sentence? What do you notice about the way that my words begin? That's right. All of my words start with a capital letter because they are at the beginning of each sentence. 
Number one, stick. Number two, draw. Number three, cut. Number four, stick. Number five, use. Number six, add. And number seven, colour. I'm going to ask you to pause the video again and can you come up with any other imperative verbs that we might need to do an instruction? Well done, you two. Our sixth and final feature is a bit of a sneaky one because there aren't any of these types of words found in this set of instructions. However, this is a type of word that we use lots and lots in our writing year two. I want you to have a look at this one with me. I want us to have a think about adverbials, adverbials of time and adverbials of manner. So adverbials of time tell us when something is going to happen. Adverbials of manner tell us how something is going to happen. Have a look at my two words here too. Can you read them with me? Gently. First. Which one of these is an example of an adverbial of time? That's right, it's this one. First, because it tells me when something is going to happen. This means that this adverbial is an adverbial of manner because it tells me how to do something. Let's have a look at my next set of words. Again, can you read them with me? Next, carefully. Well done, year two, fabulous reading. Which one of those is my adverbial of time? That's right, this word here, next, tells me when something is going to happen, just like our last word, first. First, next. Perhaps you can think of some others here too. This one here, carefully, is our adverbial of manner and it tells us how something is going to happen. A bit like our last adverbial of manner, gently. If we delve deeper with these words here too, we'll also notice something really, really important with our adverbials of manner. There is a particular spelling rule that we need to apply. Can you identify the suffix on both of those words? Gently, carefully. That's right, they both end with the suffix ly. Year two, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and now it's your turn. Can you come up with some other examples of adverbials of time and some adverbials of manner for me? How did you get on year two? Fantastic! You're really using your great mindset this morning. These are some of the other adverbials of time and manner that I have managed to come up with. So we're going to try and use some of these in our writing alongside our imperative verbs to really help the reader with their instructions. As you know, the teachers and I have been struggling a bit when it comes to our knowledge of how to look after or how to identify birds in our garden or local environments. Now, Dan the Forest Man is a bit of an expert and he sent me in the post earlier this week some pictures of a bird feeder that he had made. Now, I know that we set on our home learning challenge for you guys to have a go at creating your own bird feeder. And I know that some of you have already had a go at that or that perhaps some of you are planning to make one later this week. These are some of the pictures that Dan sent me to help me write my instructions to the other year two teachers. Now, these are all very helpful, but he didn't actually send any instructions. So I'm not quite sure of the order. I need to have a look. I'm going to put them up on the screen and I'm going to ask you to pause the video and see what order you would put my images in. Year two, this is your turn. Have a look at the photos.
Do you think they are in the right order? How would you get me to order the pictures? How did you get on? Let's have a look at my order. My order should have gone photo number three, photo number five, photo number two, photo number four, photo number seven, photo number one, and finally, photo number six. Right, thanks to your help, you two, I think I'm now ready to begin having a go at writing my very own instructions. So let's think about those features again. The first thing that I need to include at the very top of my set instructions is my heading. And remember, I need it to be simple and clear. So I'm going to go for how to make a bird feeder. Okay, checking that I've got my capital letters at the start, making sure I've got my full stop at the end. So the second feature that I need to think about, can you remember, is my subheading. And this subheading is going to be to inform the year two teachers about the equipment that they're going to need. So again, remembering my capital letter, you will, I want to help them, need. So I need to think very carefully about the equipment and the items that I need to inform the year two teachers about. So I've taken one of the photographs of the final product. This will also help the year two know what they're aiming to achieve by the end of my instructions. So they're going to need some string. They're going to need an orange. They're going to need some mixed seeds and they're going to need a little bit of lard or a little bit of oil to bind those seeds together. So underneath here, I'm now going to write all of the items that I need. I've now got my list of equipment. I'm hoping that I've included everything that the year two teachers are going to need. What do you think year two? Can you have a look with me? So I've put an orange, string, seeds, lard or oil. I suppose it's going to depend what you can get your hands on at the moment. Some scissors, a spoon and some gloves. Now, the reason that I've put these last items that we didn't mention in the picture before is because if you have a look here, towards the end, it gets quite messy. And so I think Dana suggested that I might need some gloves. That's not essential. I don't mind getting my hands a little bit messy and a little bit grubby at times, but that might be something that the year two teachers want to consider. I also know that I'm going to have to cut the orange and I'm going to have to scoop out the inside of the orange in order to be able to place the seeds inside my bird feeder. Right, let's go back to our features. So I have my heading, I have my subheading, I have my equipment. So what was the next thing year two that I needed to start with? Can you remember? I need to start with either a number or a bullet so that each instruction starts a new line and my reader knows where to start and where to end. So let's have a look. Instruction number one. If I have a look again at my picture. Okay, so the first thing that I can see that Dan did was to cut the orange. So let's have a look. I've got two particular types of words that I really want to consider in my instructions today, year two. So cut, is that an imperative verb, a doing word, or does it tell me when or how something might be done? Have a think. That's right, well done, year two. Cut is an imperative verb. Can you say the word? Can you shout the word? Can you whisper the word? Can you clap the word? How many syllables? Cut. 
Yeah, well done. One syllable. Okay, this is going to be tricky writing on here, but I'm going to give it a go. So, cut the orange in half. That's going to be my first instruction. Oh, did you notice, you too, that I also thought of my sentence and I said it out loud? I haven't even started to write it yet. Remember, we always talk about think it, say it, write it, and what's that final checkpoint? That's it. Check it. Okay, I will turn it back for you. Cut... the orange in half and what do i need at the end of my sentence a full stop okay let's check my sentence together can you use your noisy punctuation year two get those hands ready let's go cut the orange in half. Do you think my sentence is clear? Do you think my sentence has all the information? Year two, I could add as a bit of an extra chilly challenge an adverbial of time or manner to help inform my reader about this bossy verb. Can you think of which one I might choose to use? Pause the video, tell somebody, or write it down. Which one did you go for? Tell me some of them. Excellent. Still using your growth mindset, I see. Well done, year two. Okay, so the one that I've chosen, I'm going to start with an adverbial of time. So I've gone through and I've had a look at some of the examples that we came up with before, and I'm going to go with the word first. Can you use my word at the beginning of your sentence? Can you check that all of my words are written correctly? Think about what they might need to start with. Think about what might need you using with a purple polishing pen. Well done, you two. Fantastic. I need to make this into a capital. Let's have a go. Remembering that my capitals are nice and tall and stand proudly. I'm going to use this to help me copy and practice my spelling. But don't panic here too, because we've sent you some resources to help you with this challenge. OK, now I've got my adverbial of time. Let's check again, you two. First, cut the orange in half. Do you agree? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Show me. Oh, I can see a lot of you've got your thumbs down. Is that because I've still got my capital letter here? Okay, let's change that. Because it's not the beginning of my sentence anymore. And it's not a name. So it's not a, going to need a capital. Right, that's better, isn't it? So first, cut the orange in half. Oh, yes, of course. After my adverbial of time, I need to put in a comma. OK, should we check that again? Let's go. First, cut the orange in half. Well done, year two. Fantastic. Right, year two. Let's have a look at my second photograph that Dan sent me. Let me hold that up for you. Can you see that? This is your turn. Can you think of an imperative verb, a bossy verb, that will instruct the year two teachers of what to do in this photo? OK, I like your ideas. I'm going to go with the word scoop. Scoop, because if you have a look with the spoon, he's scooping out all of the goodness out of the orange. Perhaps we could use that and mix it back in with the seeds afterwards. That's a thought to remember. Right, I need to think about this really, really carefully. So let's have a go. I'm going to remember my capital letter because you all told me last time. Scoop. 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 Scoop out the orange.
full stop. Oh, I'm really proud of myself with that one, you two. What's that? I've got a spelling mistake. Oh, man. Okay, which word is not spelt correctly? Have a look, you two. Use those super eyes of yours. Come on, impress me. Of course, it's the word scoop. I don't want the letter K, even though it makes that K sound. I need the letter C. Okay, so we're going to amend that. Well, it's a good job you're with me today, year two. Do I still need my capital letter, though? Okay, so... S K -oop. Scoop out the orange. That's better. I bet you know what my next challenge is for you, year two. Correct. Can you add to my sentence an adverbial of time or manner? Now, if we look back at our first sentence, we chose an adverbial of time. So maybe we could mix things up a little bit and we could go for an adverbial of manner. Now, remember, those adverbials of manner use which suffix? That's right, the L-Y. What can you think of? S scoop out the orange. Hmm got some fab ideas today year two well done i heard the word carefully and you came up with the word slowly i even heard the word quickly but we've got to remember we need to choose the right word these are all really really good examples but they don't always work with the sentences hmm carefully scoop out the orange slowly scoop out the orange quickly scoop out the orange. Which one do you think is best? I'm going to go for the word carefully, carefully scoop out the orange. I think there could be a couple of disasters, like maybe getting the orange juice in your eye, which wouldn't be very pleasant. Okay, so again, year two, can you help me? What do I need to do with this word? Fantastic. Use that adverbial of manner. Let's check it with our noisy punctuation, year two. Carefully scoop out the orange. Well done. Again, oh, yes, of course. All right. We need our comma. Carefully scoop out the orange. I wonder, could I use that adverbial anywhere else? Hmm. Yes, I could. That's right. I could use it at the end here but I wouldn't want it twice. So I could have scoop out the orange carefully. That's one of the beauties about some words. We get to mix them around and play with them. So year two, I think I'm ready to go and have a go at writing the rest of my instructions. Thank you so much for your help. But as I said at the beginning, your challenge is to write your own very set of instructions. Now, this might be for the bird feeders or you might want to have a go at writing some instructions for something else that you're up to at home at the moment. But remember, your instructions have got to include the following. They need to have a heading. They need to have a subheading, which includes a list of the equipment you're going to need. You're going to need to start each instruction with either a number or a bullet point. We need to see some of those imperative verbs, some of those bossy verbs. And it would be really, really good if you could add further detail by including some adverbials of time. So they tell the reader when something is going to happen or an adverbial of manner, how something is going to happen. Year two, think about which chilli you might like to attempt for this challenge. For chilli one, can you use a variety of imperatives? For chilli two, can you use a variety of adverbials of time and manner? And chilli three, can you maybe include some expanded noun phrases? So maybe describing a juicy, zesty orange. And really important, could you include a top tip? We look forward to seeing your set of instructions. I'm going to go away now. Thanks to your help today, I know I'm going to be able to complete the rest of them. And maybe, just maybe, I can send them to you later to have a look at. Thanks, you too. See you soon.